First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for this opportunity. Uh, it's really my pleasure to give this talk today. And uh, my talk uh, is entitled uh, Mathematical Scattering Theory in Electromagnetic Waveguides. Um, may I ask to switch on the light? Uh, mathematical. Uh, whether it's clear uh, what's written on the blackboard? Yes? Okay. And uh, so uh, the talk is based on a joint research with uh, Boris Alexeyevich Plaminevsky. And Oleg Vasilievich Tarafanov. Uh, a paper uh, uh, which is uh, the basis of this talk uh, will be published in uh, uh, the Cloud of Physics uh, 22. So, uh, uh, and uh, a detailed uh, proof of these results will be uh, will be published later. Uh, it's uh, currently prepared for publication. So uh, let me start with the uh, explanation of the uh, title. So uh, waveguide, uh, what we mean under waveguide is a domain uh, in three-dimensional space which coincides uh, outside the large ball with the union uh, of uh, finitely many uh, non-overlapping semicylinders. Uh, let me denote it by G. And uh, we assume that the cross sections are bounded domains and the uh, boundary of uh, the domain G is uh, smooth. And in such a domain, uh, we consider uh, the Maxwell uh, system of equations. Let me uh, copy it on the blackboard. and uh, two divergence equations. Divergence mu psi two of xt equals to zero i divergence uh, epsilon psi one of xt equals to zero. And uh, on the boundary, uh, these equations are in domain G uh, T is uh, time, and uh, on the boundary we have the boundary conditions, psi 1 tau, uh, that uh, uh, means that uh, the tangent uh, component of the vector uh, psi 1 is equal to 0, and uh, the uh, normal component of the vector um, u psi 2 is equal to 0 on the boundary. Uh, these boundary conditions correspond to the perfectly conductive boundary. And uh, if we deal with uh, the non-stationary problem, we have to impose uh, the initial conditions uh, at the zero moment of time of x. Uh, psi, sorry, um, okay, uh, well, uh, I have to put this index uh, up or down, but, well, sometimes <laughs> it jumps, sorry. 
psi 2, OK, uh, x0 is equal to? So it's psi 1, not psi, psi prime. Uh, not, not psi prime, psi 1. Psi 1, yeah, 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 sure. Uh, 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 let me explain what's written here. Uh, the psi 1 and psi 2 stand uh, for here the? Here it's prime. Yeah, no, 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 no. It, it's it's uh, always one, oh. always one. Sorry, sorry for that. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's always it's one. Not, it's, one it's, it's not a derivative. It's not a prime, but it's a derivative. We, uh, uh, yeah, no, it, it's not. Uh, it, it's uh, the tangential component of the field psi one on the boundary. Okay. So uh, in the boundary conditions and the initial conditions, there are no derivatives. Okay. Uh, the derivative is here. Uh, D or dt, and uh, the, uh, the derivatives uh, uh, curl and uh, divergence. Uh, so uh, psi 1 and psi 2 stand for the uh, electric and magnetic fields, uh, uh, while uh, epsilon and mu are the characteristics of the feeling medium of the waveguide. Uh, these are the, the electric permittivity and the magnetic permeability. Uh, the waveguide is assumed to be an isotropic. That means that these characteristics are matrices and uh, it is assumed to be uh, non-homogeneous, uh, which means that uh, they may depend on a point uh, in the waveguide. And uh, we assume that this uh, epsilon and mu satisfy uh, the stabilization conditions. Epsilon of, uh, if we write uh, them in each cylindrical end, if we write them uh, in local coordinates, yz, then uh, uh, epsilon yz uh, tends to the um, well, if it's uh, the cylindrical end with number q, then the, there is some limit matrix. Independent of the actual variable, that is the variable uh, along. And y is the variable on the cross section. So uh, these uh, matrices tend to some limit matrices uh, at an exponential rate and the same uh, inequality should be written for the uh, mu, so mu uh, of y q of y z minus, and the same estimate. So uh, that's the statement uh, of uh, our problem. May I have something? Yeah, Isn't sure. Isn't an idea to use imaginary unit in both head sides? Of uh, well, uh, if we. Uh, well, uh, my, uh, a big part of uh, my talk will be de devoted to the uh, stationary situation when uh, d over dt is uh, changed for uh, the spectral parameter. So here we have k, the spectral parameter, and uh, uh, here we have uh, an elliptics of a joint operator. Uh, so that's uh, the reason. Uh, okay. And uh, this is uh, the statement. And so uh, I've explained what means uh, the waveguide, what means uh, electromagnetic. And uh, I have to explain what kind of uh, scattering theory I'm uh, to discuss. So uh, let me recall the basic uh, objects of the uh, scattering theory. In scattering theory, uh, one traditionally consider uh, so-called uh, perturbed and unperturbed operators, the two operators. Uh, so uh, if we 
uh, associate to this uh, problem in the waveguide an uh, operator which uh, will be denoted by M. I'll explain how to introduce such an operator in uh, our situation, but, uh, but not now, a, a little bit later. So uh, if we associate this uh, operator M to the uh, waveguide G, uh, and uh, we associate, uh, uh, and we take an, uh, a problem, uh, another problem in uh, uh, another uh, domain. So we, uh, we cut the uh, central part of the waveguide, and we have a collection of, uh, uh, of uh, cylindrical ends. Uh, and let us denote uh, this collection by G0. And we can associate a self-adjoint operator M0 uh, to this G0. And we will consider this uh, operator as an unperturbed operator. And uh, the question uh, is uh, to, uh, and the main object of the scattering theory is the so-called uh, uh, are the so-called wave operators. Wave operators uh, are introduced uh, uh, as uh, the limits, the strong limits of uh, the following expression, i to the power mt, i to the power minus i m naught t, and uh, since this operator M0 and M act in uh, different uh, domains, so they act in uh, different Hilbert spaces, so we have to plug here some uh, identification operator J. Uh, by the end of the talk, uh, everything uh, would be clear. Uh, but uh, now I just want to to give some basic concepts. T tends to infinity. Uh, yes, uh, T tends to uh, plus infinity or minus infinity. And uh, if uh, such limits exist, uh, one say that the wave operators uh, exist. And uh, the second uh, important question is uh, uh, the completeness of these wave operators. Uh, I cannot... Uh, I, I, I'm not uh, ready to, to give uh, an explanation of what means complete, uh, completeness, but uh, by the end of the talk, uh, I will we'll, uh, return to this point. So, uh, existence and completeness. Existence and completeness of uh, wave operators W plus minus. And finally, we can introduce the so-called scattering operator, uh, which is uh, given by the following formula. W plus star, W minus. And uh, uh, we will discuss this operator as well. So uh, here are the basic uh, concepts of the scattering theory. Uh, and uh, these are the main go uh, aims of uh, my today's talk. Um, okay, uh, before I start uh, uh, with uh, the formulation of the results, I should uh, give uh, a, a literature review. So, uh, what about literature here? Uh, we have uh, three uh, topics here. Uh, the Maxwell system, the scattering theory, and the waveguide theory. Uh, all the three topics uh, themselves are months 
and uh, I cannot pretend to give a, a comprehensive review of them, but uh, let me uh, just mention some uh, monographs and uh, papers that uh, we use in uh, our research concerning these uh, general topics. So uh, concerning the scattering theory, I would mention books by uh, Dmitry Ravelich E5. Um, let me uh, look for the year. Uh, the uh, scattering theory, general theory, and the scattering theory, analytic theory. Uh, concerning the Maxwell system, I would mention a series of papers by Birman and Salamiak. Uh, 87, 93. And uh, concerning the waveguide theory, I would mention a book by Nazarov and Plaminevsky. Uh, and uh, this uh, waveguide theory is uh, uh, still uh, developing, so there are many papers by Nazarov and his courses and Plaminevsky and his courses. I'm one of them. Uh, so uh, concerning the waveguide theory, I would refer you to the book and uh, to the papers of these uh, authors. Uh, I mean uh, Sergei Alexandrovich Nazarov uh, Ipomash. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, if we discuss these intersections, it would be easier to give uh, a more detailed uh, reference list. So, uh, uh, what about uh, the scattering theory in waveguides? Uh, scattering theory, waveguides. Let me uh, mention, first of all, possibly it was the first paper uh, by uh, Goldstein. Uh, 69, who considered uh, the Laplacian in a cylindrical locally perturbed waveguide. Then uh, his uh, results were generalized by Leifert. Uh, in a series of papers, 75, 76, uh, who considered uh, the waveguides of uh, general geometry. Uh, he considered uh, the, acoustic, the so-called acoustic separator, uh, divergence A of X, uh, nabla, uh, in the uh, when A of X is uh, the identity matrix, it's just the Laplacian, but uh, he assumed that A of X uh, uh, is a self-adjoint uh, matrix valid function, uh, which is equal to the, uh, the identity outside the large ball. Uh, then uh, let me uh, give uh, some other uh, references. Uh, book by Melrose, 93, uh, Christiansen, uh, 95. They considered uh, the uh, so-called B-manifolds with exact B-matrix, uh, which can be considered, uh, in a sense, as uh, uh, waveguides with cylindrical ends. And uh, also, I'll uh, give some references concerning the, uh, the cylindrical waveguides with uh, power uh, stabilization of coefficients. Not exponential, but uh, a slower power stabilization. So, uh, uh, at all, uh, no, not for, uh, Elgard. Zero 07. 
So uh, that's uh, the literature concerning mainly the acoustics or the Laplacian in uh, waveguides. Uh, what about uh, the Maxwell and the scattering theory here? Uh, well, most of the papers, uh, mo most of the results are devoted uh, to uh, Maxwell and scattering theory. Uh, are devoted to the Maxwell in the whole space, but not uh, the Maxwell in waveguides. So. Uh, some results can be found in a book by Lux Phillips. Uh, Lux Phillips. Phillips. Uh, 16, 7. And uh, some results can be found in U5. Uh, 10. And uh, finally, let me discuss the intersection Maxwell and the waveguide theory. Maxwell uh, and waveguides. So uh, mainly the stationary Maxwell system was uh, considered. Let me mention the books by Weinstein uh, 66, Mitra Lee. Uh, 71, they cons uh, these books uh, main, uh, mainly consider the situations when the Maxwell system can be reduced to the Laplace operator, uh, so they are, there are considered some model uh, problems in model domains. And uh, the uh, Maxwell system in uh, cylindrical waveguides was uh, considered in uh, Monograph by uh, Ilyinsky. Uh, at, at all, uh, 91. And uh, in a series of papers by Bogolubov, uh, Delitzin, Sveshnikov. Uh, 99.0 and uh, a paper by Delitzin who considered uh, cylindrical uh, waveguides with uh, uh, coefficients uh, independent of the actual variable, uh, possibly locally perturbed in the bounded domain. Uh, and uh, finally, I would mention in this uh, a list, uh, a paper by uh, Plamievsky and Parecki, uh, who uh, considered uh, the waveguides of this uh, shape and uh, the situation when the coefficients uh, stabilize at infinity exponentially. Uh, and uh, 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 in this research, we continue the approach of this paper uh, Uh, we continue the approach of this paper and uh, let me now turn to the approach uh, of uh, current research. So uh, the main idea is uh, that the waveguide theory is uh, well developed for uh, uh, elliptic boundary value problems but uh, the Maxwell system is not elliptic uh, even uh, if we make it stationary, uh, if we have a uh, spectral parameter instead of uh, derivative by uh, time. So uh, it's, it's not elliptic and uh, uh, we uh, our first step is to make an, uh, an extension extension of the Maxwell system. Maxwell. Uh, so uh, we obtain uh, an equation of the following form. Uh, 
where a of x dx, the spatial part of this equation, is uh, an elliptic operator. Uh, so uh, if it's uh, elliptic, we can uh, start using the waveguide theory and uh, uh, what we do uh, in, uh, with this operator, with this problem, we associate to the problem a self-adjoint operator A here with some domain and uh, uh, we uh, uh, study its spectral properties, spectral properties, we uh, study its spectrum and on the continuous spectrum we uh, introduce the continuous spectrum eigenfunctions. Uh, I will, I will uh, discuss them in detail a little bit later and uh, the scattering matrix and uh, then uh, we can uh, uh, we can prove the limiting absorption principle which is uh, quite a standard step in uh, the scattering theory uh, limiting absorption principle that allows us to calculate the uh, spectral measure spectral measure uh, of the operator A and uh, then uh, the last step here is uh, to uh, construct the wave operators wave operators and uh, to calculate them in terms of uh, these continuous spectrum eigenfunctions uh, and to introduce the scattering operator scattering operator and uh, to establish its relation with the scattering matrix which was introduced uh, before independently uh, from asymptotic uh, considerations uh, so uh, here uh, we prove our results but not for the original problem but for the extended problem and the last uh, possibly most important step in uh, our talk uh, is uh, not in the talk but uh, in our research is how to return return to uh, the Maxwell system Maxwell so uh, that's uh, that's the plan uh, of uh, our research. And now let me, uh, let me dive into details uh, about the results uh, we obtain on this uh, way. Uh, first of all, I'll have to explain what kind of uh, uh, operator M is here. Uh, we uh, should associate a, an operator, a self-adjoint self operator to this boundary value problem and uh, uh, to this end uh, we should, uh, so uh, the operator, operator, uh, to this end we should uh, uh, use uh, the while decomposition uh, uh, this uh, construction of the self-adjoint operator is uh, just a standard procedure that can be found in Birman and Salamiak. Uh, for example, 87. Uh, so the way, while the composition is uh, the decomposition of the, uh, uh, the space L2, uh, uh, of uh, vector uh, functions with uh, three components. It can be decomposed into a uh, orthogonal sum 
of two subspaces. The first subspace is a sub subspace of gradients. Gradients. And the second subspace is the subspace uh, of functions with uh, zero divergence. And uh, if we uh, restrict our operator on this uh, J subspace, we can incorporate these uh, uh, divergence equations here into the domain of the operator and uh, uh, so we can deal uh, on uh, yes sure it depends on you and uh, firstly and secondly it depends on the boundary conditions uh, uh, the tangential or normal boundary conditions so we have actually two decompositions uh, like this and uh, the second one I wouldn't give uh, more detail uh, here because uh, it would be hard to understand uh, uh, for this short period of time. So uh, uh, we introduced the Hilbert space, which is the direct product of these two uh, direct product of these two uh, subspaces. And in such a Hilbert space, uh, we introduce the operator, which is given by the following, uh, uh, the following differential expression. It's a matrix uh, differential expression. And uh, we can show it's a, uh, it's a proposition, if you want, uh, that uh, due to the smoothness of the boundary and uh, the stabilization conditions, uh, the operator, uh, self-adjoint operator M, uh, can be defined in a strong way uh, it's a standard question concerning the Maxwell system, uh, whether it's uh, weak or strong. So uh, we can uh, define it in a strong way. That means that the domain is uh, 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 consists of functions uh, u1, u2, such that u1 is uh, in uh, Sobolev space H1, uh, J2, U2 is uh, in Sobolev space H1, J nu, and uh, the boundary conditions are, are also incorporated into the, uh, the domain. Yes, and uh, the result is that the operator given by this differential uh, expression with such a domain is self-adjoint in the Hilbert space H. Uh, so uh, I, I have explained what kind of operators we have here. And uh, let me now turn to describing its uh, spectral properties. So uh, first, uh, let me uh, say what uh, uh, the continuous and uh, the point spectrum are. Uh, the, uh, we consider a boundary value problem. So uh, it's, it's similar to uh, what's written uh, to the right, but uh, uh, we have a spectral parameter here instead of the, the derivative uh, i, sorry, minus, not minus, without minus, minus i mu1 Uh, 
this uh, system of equations, uh, boundary conditions, u1 to equals 0, mu u2 equals to 0. And uh, uh, we say that a point k is a point of the continuous spectrum if uh, and only if uh, such a problem have uh, a solution u, u1, u2, uh, which uh, does not belong to the L2 space. So this uh, solution is by definition the continuous spectrum eigenfunction. Uh, uh, just a second. Uh, such a solution is not in L2, but uh, it should be polynomially bounded. Uh, Uh, actually, uh, so uh, such a solution is called the continuous spectrum eigenfunction. Uh, here is continuous spectrum eigenfunction. Uh, actually, uh, for all uh, values of spectral parameter excluding some isolated values, this number n can be chosen to be zero. So uh, actually, the continuous spectrum eigenfunctions are almost everywhere uh, bounded. Uh, I mean, almost everywhere in K. Uh, they, uh, for all K, ex uh, excluding uh, uh, isolated values, uh, these solutions are bounded. And uh, these isolated values, when uh, the continuous spectrum eigenfunctions are not bounded, but are polynomially bounded, are called the thresholds. Thresholds. Uh, thresholds uh, n positive. Uh, so uh, these thresholds uh, are specific points of uh, the continuous spectrum. Uh, let me say that uh, they are located symmetrically with respect to zero and uh, uh, they uh, uh, can ac uh, they accumulate only at infinity, and uh, on the interval between uh, two neighboring thresholds, uh, the uh, number of linearly independent uh, continuous spectrum eigenfunctions kappa uh, is a uh, number of uh, linearly independent continuous uh, spectrum eigenfunctions. This number uh, is independent of k on each interval between neighboring thresholds. But on the thresholds, uh, it have jumps. So uh, the thresholds are like uh, the edges of the spectrum, in a sense. Uh, uh, OK. Uh, for simplicity, for brevity of my talk, I will today uh, discuss the situation when uh, k, uh, when there is no point spectrum, so there are no uh, real eigenvalues. There are only, there is only the continuous spectrum. But uh, everything can be done uh, for the uh, general situation. But uh, today it would be easier to to speak about the continuous spectrum only. Uh, the scattering theory is, uh, mainly deals with uh, the continuous spectrum, so uh, it wouldn't be uh, very um, restricting to, to assume that there is no point spectrum. And uh, now, what about uh, the continuous uh, spectrum eigenfunctions? Uh, we can show that on each interval, between neighboring thresholds, there are uh, specific continuous spectrum eigenfunctions which uh, that have uh, asymptotics of the following form uh, of x k of k uh, u l minus of x k 
plus uh, an exponentially decaying error term. So uh, the asymptotics of these continuous spectrum eigenfunctions consists of one uh, so-called incoming wave, uj plus, and a linear combination of outgoing waves, ul minus. Uh, these waves are uh, functions that live uh, just in uh, cylindrical ends of the waveguide, and uh, they can be written uh, in the following uh, form, a normalization factor. Uh, an exponential uh, function of the actual variable times uh, phi j plus minus depending on a point in the cross section. Uh, well, uh, not, not, not your solution, but uh, uh, your solution is uh, an exact solution in the uh, in the whole domain, but these are some local solutions of some model problem uh, which can be used to, to construct the asymptotics. So uh, you can consider this as a, uh, functions which are obtained as, uh, with when you separate variables in uh, uh, a model domain, if you plug instead of uh, epsilon and mu, uh, you plug the limiting coefficients. So you have a model problem in a cylinder, and these are the solutions of this model problem. And uh, these lambda j plus minus are real. Uh, they are real. Uh, they are real analytic uh, between thresholds. And uh, the derivative of this lambda j plus minus uh, over k, the derivative over k, uh, is uh, uh, and is negative for incoming wave and the positive for outgoing wave. So that's uh, uh, the difference between these two type of waves. And uh, uh, why uh, why do do we deal with uh, these uh, uh, expressions? Uh, if we collect these coefficients S, J, L as a matrix, this matrix S of K with elements S, J, L of K is uh, the scattering matrix, is the scattering matrix by definition. It is, it turns out to be unitary and uh, it also depends analytically on the spectral parameter between thresholds. So uh, we have introduced uh, the continuous spectrum, a specific basis of continuous spectrum eigenfunctions. We have introduced the scattering matrix. Now uh, we can uh, describe, so uh, we can uh, uh, prove the limiting absorption principle uh, which states that, uh, well, uh, well, I, I have not so much time left, so uh, I'll skip some details. Uh, but the limiting absorption principle allows us to uh, show that the resolvent uh, of uh, uh, the uh, operator uh, is uh, a function with the following asymptotics. Uh, J minus plus, U J minus plus, plus an exponentially decaying uh, error term. So uh, we can prove uh, that the resolvent have limits, and we can describe these limits in terms of the scattering matrix, the continuous spectrum eigenfunctions, and the waves. And uh, we can also ca calculate the uh, jump of the resolvent on the spectrum. It's uh, also a standard uh, 
uh, idea in the scattering theory. And this jump is equal to, uh, just a second, I f y j plus y j plus. So uh, this jump is completely, can be completely exp uh, expressed in terms of continuous spectrum eigenfunctions. And uh, uh, the stone uh, formula, which is uh, uh, a standard uh, step in the scattering theory, allows us to uh, compute the spectral measure of uh, our operator on the uh, on the uh, uh, the well the quadratic form of the spectral measure. So it is equal to uh, the following integral bk. And so we see that the spectral measure uh, turns out to be absolutely continuous on each interval between neighboring thresholds. And uh, this allows us, in fact, uh, prove that there is no singular continuous spectrum uh, for this uh, operator. And uh, uh, so we have an exact expression for the spectral measure. It's uh, expressed in terms of yj uh, plus. Uh, because of this. Uh, because of this i, yeah. Uh, so we have the expression of the spectral measure and uh, we, ha we have that the singular continuous measure, uh, uh, the singular continuous spectrum is absent. So uh, finally, uh, I'm almost ready to, uh, to turn to the uh, wave operators. Mm, let me uh, let me leave this on the blackboard. Okay, without references. So you should prove this with a character that leads to something. Uh, sorry? You should prove that this operator doesn't mix with these two uh, pressures. No, 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 no. I, um, well, uh, uh, the, the, these two, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, I'll have no time to explain the return procedure, but uh, I still have some time to, uh, to exp explain the results. So uh, if we uh, introduce uh, the, uh, for, for a function f, if we introduce uh, uh, the operators phi plus minus by the following formula, for each function f, we compute its uh, inner product uh, with uh, y1 uh, plus of k, then uh, with y2 plus of k, uh, etc. fy uh, kappa plus of k. And if we uh, collect such a vector, then uh, this uh, phi plus minus operator, operators uh, can be uh, uh, considered as uh, a generalization of the Fourier transform. And uh, uh, these vectors uh, live uh, uh, in uh, a Hilbert space and the dual Hilbert space, it's uh, a so-called di direct integral uh, over decay C uh, kappa of K. That means that uh, this uh, Hilbert space is a Hilbert space of functions uh, that are uh, with values that are vectors uh, with kappa components, but kappa depends on k. So uh, 
it's a so-called direct integral. It's a, it's a space of functions with values, but the values are vectors of different sizes. And uh, uh, if we consider this operators phi plus minus, we can prove that this phi plus minus can be continued uh, to the whole Hilbert space H. Uh, and uh, this operator turns out to be isometric. Uh, we have that phi plus minus star phi plus minus is identity. Phi plus minus phi plus minus star uh, is identity. Here is identity in uh, uh, in H capital. Here is identity in H gothic. And uh, uh, finally, phi plus minus M are uh, K phi plus minus. In physics, this relation is called the completeness of continuous spectrum eigenfunctions. This relation is called the orthogonality uh, of continuous spectrum eigenfunctions. And this one is the intertwining property of the spectral transforms. So uh, why do we introduce the spectral transforms? Because uh, the wave operators can be computed uh, in terms uh, of these spectral transforms. Uh, it turns out, uh, let, me, let me be brief, uh, it turns out that uh, this, sorry, these limits here exist and they are equal, uh, okay, uh, exist, these limits exist, uh, and what, uh, they are equal to what? Uh, they are equal to the um, second, a second. Uh, they are equal to phi minus plus star. Phi not plus minus, uh, minus plus. This uh, operator phi is a spectral transform for the uh, perturbed problem. And phi not minus plus is the spectral transform which can be introduced in a similar way for this uh, unperturbed problem in a collection of cylindrical ends. And it turns out this, that these limits exist and are equal, can be computed in terms of this phi plus minus and phi not plus minus uh, operators. Uh, and uh, the scattering operator, if we use these formulas, we can show that the scattering operator if is equal to phi not minus star s transposed phi not plus. Uh, so uh, we we have uh, the scattering operator uh, of this uh, problem, which is uh, expressed in terms of the scattering matrix we introduced independently from the asymptotics point of view, and uh, the spectral transforms of a simple unperturbed problem. Well, uh, here uh, I uh, uh, should uh, uh, comment that uh, this unperturbed problem can be chosen in uh, various ways. So uh, depending on the unperturbed problem, we have different operators here. And uh, if we choose this unperturbed problem to be a collection of cylinders with constant coefficients, then this operators turns out to be rather simple. They are, in fact, they are uh, the integral operators with uh, uh, the functions uj plus minus involved. 
And uh, so uh, we have uh, an exact formula for this uh, scattering operator. Why it is important? Because uh, we know much about the scattering matrix. We know, uh, for example, its dependence on the spectral parameter. We can describe its dependence on the spectral parameter in uh, neighborhood of thresholds. Uh, we can uh, uh, calculate it uh, numerically. Yeah, yeah, sure, I, I, I'm, I'm almost, uh, almost ready. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, uh, so uh, the main uh, point that uh, ST is a, a well-studied function. And uh, thus we have uh, uh, a well-studied uh, operator uh, as capital. Okay, uh, thank you for your attention. So uh, uh, in, in uh, the scattering theory, uh, the traditional, traditionally the main result uh, is to prove that the wave operators uh, at first they exist, and the second, secondly that they are complete. I, I haven't said what complete means, uh, so thank you for your question. I can say uh, just what means the completeness of the wave operators. The completeness means that uh, W uh, is the image of this operator W is uh, equal to the uh, space, uh, the Hilbert space H. So uh, if we have an exact formula for this uh, wa uh, wave operators, uh, we have, uh, uh, we can, easily show that uh, this W operator uh, uh, is complete. So uh, we have proved not only the existence and completeness, but we have uh, an exact formula which is described in terms of the continuous spectrum eigenfunctions and the uh, uh, continuous spectrum eigenfunctions of the unperturbed uh, problem. So uh, that, that's the result. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, this, uh, uh, well, mm, uh, if, if to, to, to talk about the scattering theory, what, what, are, what is the meaning of this W plus minus operators? So, uh, in fact, uh, you deal with, uh, uh, if, if you deal with the original problem, you have some kind of uh, behavior with time. Uh, so this space is uh, the space is a Hilbert. Uh, I, I represent the Hilbert space, and this is the point uh, t zero, and this is the point t plus infinity. And uh, uh, the idea of the scattering theory is that we uh, don't want to discuss the uh, difficult problem uh, with. Uh, uh, with uh, general coefficients, but we want to discuss the unperturbed problem. And uh, the unperturbed problem, uh, here I have a uh, e to the power i m t, the, uh, the semi-group uh, uh, which uh, uh, corresponds to the original problem. And have a, here I have the semi-group uh, that I have for the uh, unperturbed problem, more simple problem. So uh, if I want to, uh, to exp uh, explain the behavior of this uh, uh, solution, I uh, can say that this behavior is close to the behavior of this uh, unperturbed problem. As t tends to infinity, but I have to explain uh, 
in what point I should start. So uh, this point is uh, W plus F. If it is F, this is W plus F. So uh, that's, uh, this operator describes uh, where I should start uh, so that the asymptotics of this uh, unperturbed problem is close to the asymptotics of the uh, perturbed problem. А вопрос вот такой вот. Волна пролетела, вот какой эффект все эти конструкции, как это все разлетело? Ну, ну формализация там будет сложная. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, the, uh, this, uh, in fact, this formula shows that if you have uh, uh, an incoming wave QJ plus that is put into the waveguide, you ask how uh, it uh, propagates in the waveguide. And this uh, SJL, the uh, element entries of the scattering matrix, describe how the energy of the uh, electromagnetic wa uh, wave is uh, is uh, uh, distributed uh, among the uh, outgoing waves. So uh, this uh, is uh, the situation uh, Natalia Vasilna tells. And uh, the uh, scattering operator uh, gives uh, a dual, uh, uh, gives an answer on the dual question. Uh, uh, if, you, if you have uh, uh, not a, a, a fixed uh, spectral parameter, but if you uh, start at minus infinity and uh, uh, finish at plus infinity, what's uh, the difference? Uh, and uh, this uh, scattering operator answers this question. And uh, as you see, these uh, two uh, operators, uh, scattering matrix and scattering operator, uh, are uh, uh, connected uh, by some kind of Fourier transforms. Uh, размерность 3 существенна, because uh, uh, the Maxwell operator is uh, three-dimensional by its uh, nature. Well, uh, we discuss the physical Maxwell operator. Sure, we can uh, consider uh, uh, its generalization for other dimensions, but we do not. <laughs> 